Hello guys and welcome back to Heart of the Hole and it's a slightly sad one today because for me this is my final preview of the season. Dan will handle the Chelsea preview, we're very excited for that game because obviously 10,000 villains will be back in Villa Park for that game but this time we're heading to North London to face Tottenham Hotspur away from home. They're a side who came to Villa Park and beat us 2-0 earlier on the season so hopefully Dean Smith and the lads have vengeance on their minds as they go into this one. I'm going to run you through with the five things that they'll need to do if they're going to come away from Spurs with all three points. Let's waste no time guys, let's get it. Now the first thing that you need to do if you're going to stop Tottenham Hotspur is to stop that front line. They have such a wealth of attacking talent if you look at the likes of Hyung Min Son, Harry Kane, Gareth Bale, Dele Alli, the list goes on and on and on. Even Carlos Vinicius is someone who scored against us in the return leg at Villa Park. If you're going to stop that front line, you need to be patient and use your defence's best traits to your advantage. We all know that Tyrone Mings and Ezri Konsa lead the league in blocks and clearances and in those kind of metrics. So as long as you're in the face of those players when they receive the ball, usher them wide, don't show them towards goal and make sure that you don't dive in and give away silly free kicks because those players that I mentioned before are so good from dead ball situations. You have a good chance at stopping them getting on the score sheet. So I think the trick is not to be rash, don't dive in, usher them away from goal, use the blocks and clearances when the moment is right to get the ball clear and use counter-attacks to our advantage. Now, one of the other things that Villa are going to have to do is not just be wary of those players when they're out of possession, but always be conscious of their positions when we're in possession. Because as soon as we lose the ball, we've seen that nigh telepathic link up between Harry Kane and Jung Min Son feed so many balls through for the other in counter-attacking situations. It's actually ridiculous. You watch them at times this season, Harry Kane will receive the ball, pick his head up, and there's a 20-30 yard pass over the top of the defence for Hyung Min Son to run onto, and he will tuck it away every time you can bet your house on that. We've seen it do them so many times this season, so if Villa gets sucked into one of those end-to-end -end transitional games that we often do where the midfield becomes slightly a muck, then we have to be wary of those kind of players' positions because if we allow them too much time and space on the ball, we know that the goals and assists that come from just that pairing is really dangerous. So they have to be wary of where Harry Kane and Kyung Min Son are at all times, not just when we're off the ball. Now for my second point, which is far easier said than done, it is if we take the lead, Villa need to keep the lead. Now whilst you're saying, thanks for the update, Captain Obvious, I know that seems like a crazy thing to say, but we've lost four of the last five league games in which Villa have taken the lead, which is just completely crazy because when you look back to the start of the season, 12 of Villa's 13 wins came as a result of Villa being the first side to take the lead. So we know that we can do it and perhaps that's what's more frustrating. It might just be a matter of regaining the confidence Villa because they keep making those mistakes and letting opponents back into game. They must be slightly wary that when they do go up they have the tendencies to go and let that game slip if Villa go and get a first then I think it's a matter of being competent and brave on the ball enough so that you don't allow the opponents back into the game but you keep yourselves on the front foot and put yourselves in a position to go and get another now no player in the Premier League has scored more goals against the so-called top six than Ollie Watkins this season who will be crucial if Villa are to get anything out of this game and I'm not just talking about him scoring goals if you go back to Leeds's win over Spurs just last week when they put three past a ragged Spurs defence it was because of the movement in and around the area I recommend you go and look at Patrick Bamford's goal for this one that just completely bamboozled the Spurs defence there were so many runs and dribbles happening in and around the 18 yard books that some players didn't know whether to step in step out Eric Dyer in particular was stuck in the mud on many occasions just because because of the sheer amount of movement that was going on around him. Ollie Watkins, we know, is very good in front of goal, but we also know that his energy and running in the game is almost completely unmatched. It's very crucial that he uses those runs to drag Spurs defenders away from those players like El Ghazi and Traore, who can operate in those spaces 12 yards out from goal, and nine times out of 10, seem to be able to end up putting the ball in the back of the net. Now, if this game still comes one too early for Jack Grealish, which we're going to assume it will because he was only fit to play, about 15-20 minutes just three days ago, then I think giving John McGinn the license to go and play in that 10 role, which combined with his fine goal against Crystal Palace, he's looked really good in recent weeks in offensive positions. So I think the key is to take Jacob Ramsey out of that team 
and put Marvellous Nakamba in. I think if you put Nakamba and Louise at the base of that midfield, it makes Villa a bit more controlling. It enables Nakamba to be more dispossessive, play that destructor role that he's done so well for this season, and give Villa a solid base at the bank of that midfield that allows McGinn to go forward, conscious free, and get into it offensive positions where he can unpick that back line, as he did so well at times against Crystal Palace. It also allows Villa to drop to a 4-5-1 without the ball, which can crowd out those midfield areas, allow players to drop slightly deeper to form a wall in front of that back line and make Villa slightly harder to penetrate so all in all I think it's a win-win and I think with just the, the sheer amount of games that Villa are playing at the moment making some changes is going to be necessary in keeping the Villa players fit for that final game of the season where Dean will want to put on a show in front of his fans and so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, from me for the final time this season. Those are my five things that Villa need to do if they're going to beat their upcoming opponents. It's been a really great season for me personally and for this channel. We really thank you all for your continued support. It feels like Villa are just going through the motions at the moment, but we here on the Villa Filler and at Heart of the Whole are not. So stay tuned for plenty more content that's going to be coming at the end of the season. Dan and I will be giving you a season review and we'll look back for those of you that remember a video we did at the start of the season where we predicted the Premier League table. So stay tuned for loads more content guys. It's going to be a really fun summer at the channel with the Euros and everything like that. So now's a perfect time to get involved. Get subscribed, hit that like button and we'll see you next time out. Up the Villa.